And I'm not muted now. Hello and welcome to today's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I am your host and unmuted community developer, Doug Lilly. Welcome to today's Rocksmith Developer Stream. If this is the first time you've been here ever or the first time in a few weeks, uh, let me tell you what we're doing. Uh, we are doing a partially live, partially pre-recorded stream. Uh, right now, this this is live, uh, which is why we didn't add, edit out that part where I was muted. Um, anytime you see me pretty much on the screen, that means we're live. Everything else is pre-recorded. Uh, we've got some segments from staff. Uh, we have a special guest from the community, Dirt Fiddler, uh, who has done a couple of performances today, uh, which we will see pretty soon. Uh, as usual, we're going to have raffles throughout the stream, so make sure you keep an eye in the chat for that. Uh, I'll announce them. And then UB Jurassic, that's Brian Turner. He is your community manager in North Carolina. He will help you uh, through those raffles. In addition, we are taking questions throughout the stream. Uh, so make sure you reach out to UB Jurassic once more to get those questions to him, and he'll route them back to me. Uh, right now, I want to say hello to our first guests of today's stream. Uh, hello, Dan and Layla. Hi. <laughs> I'm little Dan. I'm, I'm, little I'm Dan. down in the corner every once in a so, while when I wiggle my mouse over here, because I'm both running the wheels of steel and saying hello. So. Um, Dan is doing uh, pretty much triple duty right now. He's uh, he's hosting this call, which is why he's the little little camera. Uh, he is also helping. Uh, he's part of the the sort of podcasty segment, and he's running the board. So he's doing a lot right now, which is why uh, his camera is very small, and I don't see him on stream. Uh, Dan, no, are you there? I'm I'm here, but see, you're, you're just I, a voice. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, it it sure. only it only <laughs> happens if I roll over, and then that puts my my interface for the video chat. So you will hear well, me uh, better than than seeing me, and that's probably good. You know, realistically. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome, Tiny Dan, and welcome Thank Layla you. back to the stream. Hi. Uh, Thank it's you. been a it's been a little while since I've had uh, either of you on. Dan Dan just made a fun gesture, and he's gone. We'll work on that. It's a it's a new week every week, and uh, we keep changing. The, the setup to try to make it uh, as, as fun as possible. And uh, sometimes there are hiccups. So uh, thank you for bearing with us on those. Uh, welcome, both of you. How are you holding up? Oh, pretty good. Um, working feverishly on some uh, uh, Rocksmith articles. And yeah. uh, that's my that's my job here. And uh, yeah, it's been great. A great, um, I don't know, five or six months now, five months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. yeah, since November, yeah. I think, is when you joined us to uh, to work on stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, Layla, uh, if you if you ever go to rocksmith.com slash news, uh, we have articles about, well, actually, uh, Dan, why don't you uh, tell us what we can find on rocksmith.com slash news? Oh, well, thank you. Yes, if you go to rocksmith.com, you may not have, have realized this, but since last May, we've been updating with one new editorial article a week, like, uh, a blog post or an embedded video. Some of these are about theory. Some of these are about techniques. Some of these are about music history. Uh, some of them are about gear. Like we've just been sort of having fun doing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, those of you who are really old timers may remember the backtrack spotlights that we did like three or four years ago in our forums. And so what we did was we liked that, but that wasn't the right place to do it. So we went through, we re-edited some of those older ones and then Layla came in and she started to do new ones. Uh, so we have a steady stream of stuff going uh, to that effect on our, our website every week. Uh, and we are noticing that you notice. Like, I know that there's usually a, a Reddit thread about whatever we post every week. We are very appreciative of any of that feedback. We like to see what you like, what you don't yeah. like. We'd like to keep doing this, you know. So, yeah, Layla and I have sort of been uh, the first two people on the uh, the editorial team, as it, as it is, uh, for taking care of that. So... Yeah, go to rocksmith.com and just check the news feed and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff that you probably didn't even realize was there. And you can thank Layla for it. <laughs> thank you, Layla. Um, actually, I'll go to Layla. Uh, one of the questions that I've been asking the guests that we've had here, uh, just to sort of open things up, is over the past few weeks, since uh, hopefully you've been listening to a lot of music, uh, is there anything that you've sort of discovered or rediscovered that you've latched onto uh, in the past two, three weeks? Oh yeah. Um, uh, well, it's you know it's funny getting to write these articles is really um, you know I get to write about you know jazz and um, R and B you know not just the the regular rock and metal stuff which is you know a lot of where I come from I have a death metal band um, I have a different metal bands um, but yeah like that um, 
I really rediscovered Bill Withers, which was really cool. There's a documentary on Netflix that that's pretty great about oh, yeah. his life. Um, so there's that, and then the, the Django Re Reinhardt piece I was working on. And, um, so sort of like rediscovering like early jazz and fusion jazz, like Weather Report, Jakob Pistorius, that kind of stuff. Um, super cool. Thanks. And uh, Dan, what about yourself? I, uh, well, I'm just, you know, I'm editing everything. I, I had some fun uh, writing a few things here and there that probably won't show up for a while. Uh, but I've been, I mean, last year was the year that I figured out that I like Rick Springfield more than I thought I did. Uh, okay. So that's kind of funny. Um, two years ago, it was Oingo Boingo. How did I miss Oingo Boingo? Which completely it's, it's a shock. confused me. Um, was... Lately, uh I, I've actually just been taking in this, in this challenging time, in this mm -hmm. uncertain time, I've been really enjoying all the radio ads that come up with different euphemisms for the word pandemic. Uh, sure. Uh, but I, I've just been taking comfort in stuff that's comfortable to me. Uh, that's been helping me get through. I'm, I'm notorious. I listen to Bach when I write. So uh, to the point where uh, uh, my wife made me a little meme of Freddie Mercury, put on your Bach and write, you know, <laughs> you know get, instead of get on your bike and ride. So uh, that's, that's my happy place. So I've been listening to old Wendy Carlos electronic interpretation, synthesizer interpretations of, okay. uh, of, of the Bach classics. So <laughs> that's my yeah, thing. Uh, Layla seems pleased about that. <laughs> yeah, um, no, uh, um, you know, on top of just the, the, rock and metal stuff um you know i do ambient music too so you know wendy carlos um you know brian eno uh harold budd like all all the all the minimalists uh um electronic artists of the you know 60s 70s is, yeah huge influence on my work as well and so yeah cool very stoked about cool that. thank you uh if for what it's worth i've been i've been Loosely, and I'm sure this will coalesce more over the next couple of weeks, but I've been uh, finding myself listening to more and more sort of uh, contemporary folk music, not like necessarily singer songwritery stuff, but just people who make music out of what they have around either in their home or in their community and they, they get together. Basically music that should be experienced live, uh, which is an unfortunate time for me to start getting into that right now yeah that seems ill-timed <laughs> yeah yeah but it's it's something that i can I, I can look forward to uh when when we are uh, unleashed back upon the world um and i was wondering uh with both of you because both of you have done recording uh in in I, I believe completely different sort of worlds oh yeah uh so i'm i'm curious with thinking about like making music out of what you have available to you uh how much does your gear uh, have an impact on how you write? Do you want me to do yeah, this you, one, Dan? Yeah, you, you take yeah. that one first, because <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see if my answer matches yours. Yeah, um, well, gear is super important. Uh, what you use absolutely defines the sound of what you're creating. That said, uh, you don't need um, top of the line equipment to make something that sounds really great and really professional sounding. Yeah. Uh, so yes and no. Um, uh, you know, and, and the expensive stuff sounds great too, but uh, you can really do a lot with very little. In fact, I recorded my entire first solo album through the built-in microphone on my Mac on GarageBand. Oh. So wow. There you go. <laughs> Use what I don't you have. That again, but <laughs> That's amazing. You know, you could do a lot with nothing, but you can also do a lot with something. So. Sure. Yeah. See, I, I have, uh, unfortunately, I think I'm the only person that actually lives in a guitar center. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't, I'm not at a loss for gear, as anybody who's been watching the stream in the recent uh, weeks knows. But I tend to not write with the gear that will be on the recording in mind. I think that's kind of what you're you're getting at. Like, do I write with a specific guitar that would be on that? I've learned what, a couple what, what of things. Are, well, please. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Clarify. Okay. What, what, what I'm picturing is uh, Dan gets a new chorus pedal, and he says, this chorus pedal is amazing, and I have this specific sound that I don't hear anywhere else, 
and I'm noodling with this chorus pedal, and I, that helps me. That leads me to uh, a, a riff or a melody that I want to incorporate into a song, and that's how that might in, impact how you write. Yeah, I mean that's exactly how the Edge writes songs. He starts twiddling. The, if, if you've seen the documentary, it might get loud. He goes over what his composition process is, and it involves three full giant stacks of rack effects. And he goes around and he monkeys with them until he gets a sound, and that inspires him to write the the rest of the music. I find that when I sit down to write, I'm doing it on uh, on the Taylor T5, uh, which is a, a thin line electric. Um, uh, that's sort of like my couch acoustic, the most expensive couch acoustic you could ever consider. <laughs> but uh, that's my sort of writing partner. And then I, whatever I write on that can translate over to whatever gear. But I do have some pieces of gear that make me go, I got to do something. Um, not to give too much away, but I've got a vocoder pedal that I'm going to be using on a Hero Falls track. It was one of the mm -hmm. very first ideas I had for that whole Hero Falls project. Um, and I was like, well, that's that's it. I've, I've got to record through this vocoder pedal. I want to get this guitar and voice thing going together through this robot vocoder voice. So that that is one rare instance where I'm like, got to use this. That does it. But otherwise, I have enough gear that I, I can write on one guitar and then just figure out what it should sound like once I actually start recording. If I don't like it, it's easy to throw sure. it out. I also do a lot of reamping. Like, I don't get my amp out. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I just cl record clean. And, and I'm super lazy. I like I use stock Logic Pro X, no plugins. It was kind of fun to see Andrew Levin go through his home recording studio because he's like, oh, "This is a plugin I really like." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't use those." Like, if it <laughs> didn't come with Logic Pro X, I ain't gonna be bothered. So everything <laughs> that I'm doing is stock that. But you can layer so many different things, and there's so many parameters you can tweak, even the tools they give you. I don't want to spend a lot on my rig, on my computer rig. It's only going to be obsolete eventually, sure. anyway. Logic Pro X just lets me plug in whatever I want. I do have a song I'm working on, kind of a, a hard rock metal song, that I literally went into the closet and brought out every guitar that has a high output pickup on it because I know I'm going to want like a lot of bridge humbuckers and I'm going to want to layer guitars to get sort of like an 80s, 90s hard rock sound. Yeah. Uh, but that's just, uh, that's just a choice, and what I wind up running it through from an amp sim, I have no idea. I just know... I know that this is a hot ceramic bridge output. I want something hot, and then I'm going to mellow it out with another guitar doubling that track with an Alnico 5, you know, and then maybe I'll get an Alnico 2, and it'll be even mellower, you know, whatever. So I, yeah. I'll, I'll layer stuff, but I don't really know what it's going to sound like until I'm done and say, okay, I abandoned this project. It's time to release it. Uh, that Talking about the uh, the 80s, 90s, like, hard rock metal sound uh i do want to i, I want to talk about this a little bit uh with the sort of weird music that i'm exploring in the moment um i'm noticing that in uh, a lot of very current prog metal and that that new I, I i don't want to call it folk it's a weird name for it but just the music that people are making on their own uh i'm hearing a lot of those like early 80s hair metal riffs that that sound and that type of solo i'm hearing that pop up in a lot of songs right now and one i just want to know if i'm making it up <laughs> or if anybody is, is anybody else hearing this like i'll hear something and i'm like that is a motley crew solo and that was released in 2019. well like people can't help but offer their their influences right like when i grew up in the right. 80s and there was this huge wave of 50s nostalgia. And we got the Stray Cats and we got all this stuff. You know, like it was what that generation grew up listening to yep. and wanted to emulate. So I am not at all surprised to hear that now we have people going back to late 80s, early 90s metal and being uh, wanting to recreate that because that's the music that was special to them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And the amps and the, the type of pedals used, you know, vintage pedals are all the rage. Um, Is that I think that rat pedal comes back every yeah, exactly. like <laughs> three years. I'm, I I sold a rat and then wound up rebuying the same rat later because I missed <laughs> it. It was it's a good pedal. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the person on staff who is the biggest rat guy is Brian Shu. I'm not kidding. He has at least five, maybe seven rat pedals from different eras, different exclusive oh, limited yeah. editions, and then different modifications. He could do an entire show just on the rat pedal, and I would encourage that if you're desperate for we'll content think, sometime. We'll think about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, right now we are going to have our first giveaway of this stream. Uh, 
uh, Dan and Layla, we will see you back uh, here in a little bit. Uh, so if you are interested in winning everything that you see on your screen now, please listen to what UV Jurassic says in the chat. Uh, if you win, you are going to get everything here. That is uh, a set of a six string set for your guitar, uh, of Ernie Ball of regular slinky strings. You're going to get a four string set for your bass, also regular slinky. Uh, you're going to get 12 Ernie Ball picks, uh, three Spectrum Plectrum picks from us here at Rocksmith. Uh, you will receive a black Ernie Ball guitar strap, a package of Ernie Ball wonder wipes, and a peg winder. All of that from Ernie, from Ernie Ball. Uh, and I will say again, these will be shipped out once we return to the office. So we are collecting the names, we are collecting the information, uh, and then these will all be sent out once we are back uh, in the office and out of the home studios uh, that we are currently in. So good luck on that. Uh, we'll let that raffle run for a little bit. Uh, and right now, uh, we will take a look at our first performance. Uh, today, we are going to look at the streamer and YouTuber Derpfurler, uh, who does a lot of different rhythm game content, uh, both on Twitch uh, and usually YouTube is, uh, I believe, cuts from uh, his Twitch streams. Uh, so he is going to play uh, Muses Hysteria. After that, we're going to uh, check out Brian Shu with some vibrato tips and tricks. Uh, so uh, good luck on the raffle. And uh, here is Derp Fiddler. Hey guys, what's up? Derp Fiddler here. Uh, I am a music and rhythm game streamer here on twitch.tv slash Derp uh, You'll usually find me playing a multitude of rhythm games, uh, including the one behind me, Rocksmith. Uh, I've been playing Rocksmith for a long time, since 2011, when the first one came out. Uh, and I've been in the rhythm game scene in general since like the early Guitar Hero days. I still play Guitar Hero to this day, but I also really enjoy playing Rocksmith. It's taught me literally everything I know about playing guitar. I've never taken lessons of any kind. Everything I know about doing, doing the strums is from, from this game. So I think that's pretty cool. I think that's... I, I like that. <laughs> I don't think I would like. I don't think I would have stuck with it if the game uh, wasn't there for me. So uh, I'm gonna be playing two songs for you today: uh, "Hysteria" by Muse and "The Middle" by Jimmy E. World. So yeah, stick around for that. Thanks for being here.
masterful performance. Uh, so that was Hysteria by Muse, a super duper fun song. Uh, I love listening to it. I love playing it. It's just one of those songs that just make you feel good, you know? It's just a fun, it's a good song. That's about all I can say. Um, so for that beginning part where I was making weird faces and doing whatever that is, I'm sure you've seen in Rocksmith where they chart pick slides, like, and it makes like, hold on, we're going to make the sound right now. You know, when it's like, right before like a cool chorus where it's like, you know, but in Hysteria, the song starts with him doing that in this direction going forward. So what he does is he pushes his pick down on the fifth fret on the top string, or the, the red string, for us Rocksmith players. He, he like builds suspense, basically. It's really cool. It's it's a cool uh it's a cool idea. You just and so on. So uh, also, the solo is, it's, it's, it took me a few tries. The version of the playthrough of this song that you just saw was not take one. <laughs> that took me a few tries. Um, and for solos like that or any other section of any song, just pull it up in Riff Repeater. And one thing that I always tell people song. is uh, to just slow it down. Just slow it down. That's That's the best advice I can give people, you know? Like, here, hold on. Where's the solo at? It's right here. So, like, let's say this is hard. Like, you're like, I can't go back and forth on those strings. You know? Yeah, I can't do that. Just slow it down. I know Brocksmith has dynamic difficulty, and you can, like, take the notes away. But, like, honestly, I think the best way to learn is to have all the notes there so you learn that pattern specifically. But just slow it down as much as you need to, right? Like, you can go down to 1% speed and just learn this if you have to. You know, and just work your way up from there until you're at 100%. Then you can be a cool rock star and play this friggin' sweet solo. You know, and I'm not even good at it. <laughs> that didn't sound very good. But, you know, that's that's my best advice with uh, using the Riff Repeater is... Dynamic difficulty is good, but in my personal opinion, I think you should have all the notes there and just slow it down as much as you need to and, and, and work your way up from there, so... Uh, I guess that's it. Above all else, have fun. This song's very fun. You know, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching Hysteria. Hi y'all, we're going to be talking about some more tips and tricks, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things, um, vibrato. And um, vibrato is like one of those things, it's kind of like your voice, um, it's how you truly express um, emotion in your playing. And um, you know, it's it's really good to have a lot of different kinds of vibrato to have under your belt because some vibratos are better for certain styles and makes it sound more authentic and some are just better for certain situations like the emotion that you want to portray um, so yeah it's it's good to practice a lot of these um, so let's go over them we're gonna just kind of go over them in the A minor pentatonic scale again because it's what uh, most guitar players know um, it's the favorite key along with E minor. And um, we're just gonna kind of go over some of them and what they're good for and how to practice it. So a good way to practice your vibrato is by just taking a note. Let's just take the fifth fret on the G string, right? And we're just gonna bend it back and, back and forth in a controlled manner. Um, you can use your thumb kind of as a pivot point to kind of bend the uh, string back and forth, something like this. And um, you kind of want to do it at a nice and controlled tempo. There's almost a, there's kind of a rhythm to it. 
right. you don't you never want your uh, vibrato to be uncontrolled um that's when you get what i call a guitar center of vibrato it's like you, you know you go to a guitar center and you hear these guys like who have amazing chops but then when they play a vibrato it sounds kind of like this um and it's not very expressive it to me it sounds like someone that can't really control what they're doing um um, a fast and small vibrato kind of sounds like more like something that B.B. King does. Um, that's a very bluesy type of solo. Um, then you also have a wide and um, slow vibrato, maybe something like... And you can kind of hear that I'm almost bending the string a whole step. Um, just in rhythm. Um, it's really, really nice, especially for, um, you know, maybe ballads or more um, just emotional playing. A lot of uh, metal guys tend to prefer, rock and metal guys tend to prefer a wider vibrato because it gets a different kind of emotion across. Um, though they can both be um, useful, like if you play them together or not together at the same time, but use them in the same space of music. So if I were to play. So right there, I started with a fast vibrato on the bottom note, but then when I ended my sentence or my musical statement, I ended with a wider vibrato, which is a really cool way of changing things up and getting different things across. Um, then you also have like really fast and wide vibrato, like guys like um, Zach Wild, when they want to portray a lot of intensity, um, they do something like this. <laughs> I'm almost like shaking my entire guitar like um, but that's also a nice thing to have too that that kind of vibrato is so intense it's great for like metal playing or just like you know more virtuosic um, when you want to get really intense um, and one of the last vibratos that you can do is one called a violin vibrato which is actually um, not used too much um, by a lot of rockers, but a lot of um, jazz guys and, and fusion guys will use this all the time. And it's a very beautiful um, side to side vibrato. You actually don't bend the string. You kind of um, bring your finger back and forth while you're fretting it. And the, the, pressure, the pressure of your finger kind of moving back and forth creates a very subtle vibrato, um, kind of like this. And it's great for chords um, because you can do that with your entire hand. Um, you'll find that you kind of have to push a little bit in um, as you're doing this to kind of create that effect because what it's doing is you're kind of relieving the pressure back and forth. So, um, yeah, I would give that a try. And welcome back to the live portion of today's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I am still your uh, community developer and host for today, Doug Lilly. Thank you for being here. Uh, right now, we are going to give away a song pack for uh, this week. So please listen to UB Jurassic to see how you can win one of five copies of the Allison Chain song pack on Steam. Uh, we're doing five of those. He'll tell you how you can win. Uh, you do need to be, uh, follow the channel in order to win one of those but we'll be sending those out uh, throughout the stream. So good luck on that. Right now, we are going to uh, revisit Dirt Fiddler. And uh, after that, we're going to check in with Rai Kin uh, while he shows off his 1978 Marshall JMP 100 watt head. Uh, so we'll look, take a look at those, and we'll be back live after those. Here's Dirt Fiddler. <laughs>
exemplary performance. Uh, so that was the middle by Jimmy World, literally the happiest song ever written. Uh, <laughs> that was my theme for today. I wanted to play songs that like put you in a good mood. Um, so that's why I picked the ones that I did. It was really hard. It was so hard for me to pick two songs. I kept I kept changing my mind so much. I wanted to play Audio Slave. I wanted to play The Pretty Reckless. I wanted to play friggin' Foo Fighters. I couldn't decide. I finally settled on the two that I picked, and I'm pretty... I think I'm pretty satisfied with how they turned out, but... Um, that song is not too bad. The solo's kind of fast. Um, that one part with... Hold on. That one part where it's... Is that what it is? You know what I mean. The that part. That took me a few tries in Riff Repeater, and my same advice uh, transfers over from what I was talking about in Hysteria, after Hysteria, where, um, you know, just slow it down. Just slow it down at max difficulty. Don't worry about dynamic difficulty. Um, it's a good feature. It is, but like, if you want to like perfect a solo, I think it's best to like have that full pattern there and just work your speed up. You know what I mean? So just do that. Um, this song is so good. That's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you f uh, to the Rocksmith people who let me be a part of the developer stream. I think that's really cool. Uh, again, you can catch me uh, on twitch.tv slash derpfurdler. Uh, I stream a lot of music games. I stream a lot of Rocksmith. I love Rocksmith. If you ever want to come by and request a song, I'll gladly play it for you. Uh, the community would love to, to have you. Uh, I stream pretty much every day, so just uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, and you can also subscribe to me on YouTube uh, for for various updates and such, and, and stream highlights uh, on YouTube. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and have a good day. Have a good song. We say that on my in my community. Have a good song. So, see you guys. Hey, everybody. Rykin here, and today I'm doing a little show and tell for you with this head that I'm sitting in front of right now, the Marshall uh, JMP 1978 Vintage 100 watt head that's been with me for probably 15, 20 years now. Um, obviously, I wasn't the original owner, uh, but when I was uh, working a lot more in recording studios in LA, uh, I got introduced to this guy, Mike Morin, and he was the um, premier amp rebuilder, you know, one of the top guys in Hollywood that was doing stuff for Slash. He was doing stuff for like Linkin Park. Basically, these rebuilt Marshall heads were like in a lot of Hollywood studios. Um, so you can hear them all over the place on recordings. I myself have recorded uh, a, a lot of albums on this, and it always seems to be the producer's like first choice, you know, like. When I bring all my heads, they're like, nah, bring that one back. Bring back the Marshall. Um, no bells and whistles on this thing. It's just a straight plug and play. No reverb, no effects loop, no solo boost. Um, it's kind of a one trick pony, but if you want that trick to be like totally awesome and the, you know, <laughs> the best, the best it can be for that, for that, basically that, you know, hard rock heavy sound, um, when I, uh, when I was talking to Mike, because these are all one of kind, too, how he does them. He talks to you first, and he's like, well, what do you want? I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I, I've always loved, like, Rat, uh, Out of the Cellar. That's, like, one of my favorite guitar tones. But, you know, I'd like that to have more gain, more high ends, and, and keep all those low mids that and that warmth, you know. And um, I think he delivered. So let's take it for a test drive. I will uh, I'll try a few different axes and... Um, Hopefully the mic on my phone will pick up the windows rattling in this place. No, just kidding. I can't turn it up that loud, but we'll see what we can do. Drop C sharp. Cool.
that's his name. That's the guitar, not the air. It's my one shred lick. Ugh. Anyway. on like 0.5 that's on like below one on the master volume guys <laughs> It's like the ultimate drop D chunk amp. Here's a Strat. Just to walk around for you, uh, we are looking at presence, bass, bass, middle, treble, master, preamp, which is a push pull. Oop, wait, there that is. And um, this is the extra gain stage. And I mean, for most of that, I had it like up here. You know, I mean, you can go crazy here, but then you have to start cutting, cutting lows and doing EQ stuff with it. But uh, yeah. Let's take a look at the back. Yeah, not much of a shot there, but um, it's legit, the real deal. Hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, look, there's the uh, there's its other brother. This guy's out of commission, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, there you go, people. And we are back live. Thank you very much, Ryken, for uh, risking the ire of your neighbors. Uh, thank you again to Dirt Fiddler for sending those uh, two excellent playthroughs. Uh, really appreciate you doing that. Uh, and we are back with Layla and Dan. Say hello, everyone. I hope I'm not hello. Good, I'm not muted. Ha, I did it right. Uh, so <laughs> um, uh, what was the first song that made you want to pick up a guitar? Oh my God. Um, uh, probably a Beatles song. Um, probably, I'm trying to think which Beatles song. Help me. <laughs> you don't know?
Okay. What was the first time you learned? Okay. Oh, Dan. Uh, Dan, you're muted. Layla and I can Layla and I can hear you, but apparently, no one oh, else can. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, no. Everybody else is. They're, they're, you're welcome for me continuing to mute myself. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah. So I was saying that uh, uh, Layla, whatever Beatles song it was, right answer. Um, and I can't strictly remember. I can't strictly remember what the first song was that made me want to play guitar, but I remember when I decided to learn to play guitar, the first song I wanted to learn was American Pie by Don McLean because my babysitter in the 70s used to come over and babysit and she would bring her guitar and she would play that song. And it turned out that that was very, very good for somebody who wanted to learn how to play rhythm guitar. Uh, ch check the bingo uh, card uh, because I'm a rhythm guitarist, as you know. Um, and that contains seven of the basic open chords. Uh, including the very impossible when you first start out barred F. So I was able to get uh, E, A, D, G, C, uh, I think E minor was in there, and then F. And like once I figured that out, I realized, wait a minute, these are all the, the they use the same shapes in all the other songs that ever existed. <laughs> and I got a, a, a Beatles fake book, like with these, you know, the, the, the sheet music books uh, that they. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like yeah, and then they just they had chord boxes in it uh, as well as just standard notation. I got it for five bucks at a local yard sale, and I opened it up and I found I could play a third of all of the Beatles songs, and that oh. blew my mind. That was that was the moment. That was when I was like, oh my god, I can actually do this. And some of these songs are only three chords long, you know, like uh, it, it was it was amazing. So, yeah, that was my story. Cool. All right. Uh, was that was that also the first song that you was was a Beatles song the first song that you tried to learn, Layla, or was uh, it successfully learned? It, yeah, because um, because like Dan said, you know they only had like sometimes two chords, three chords, but the thing about Beatles songs is some of them are um, they seem simple, but then they use these like you know lots of sevenths and um, suspended chords and yeah. Uh, you know, stuff that's a lot more advanced, more advanced than how it sounds. So you can always work your way up with a Beatles song. Um, right. So did, yeah. did you did you start with the very basic kind of cowboy chords? Yeah, yeah like uh, you know, the the F did the F bar did take a while to learn. The B seven is a real popular Beatles chord. Unfortunately, uh, yes. Yeah. For the See, long I, time, I couldn't play like a G. Uh, you know, with the you know, with both the the low and the high E string, I just played it on the high E string with the with the bottom strings open. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then when I first learned a bar chord, it was like ah. <laughs> uh, was... I I started with the uh, the Beatles of the nineties. Oasis. Nirvana. <laughs> no, <laughs> I I mean honestly, I, you say the Beatles of the nineties, I say Oasis. No, anyway, uh, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> anyway, here's Um so yeah, uh, we were talking. We we're talking over the break a little bit um, about when you are working on different types of music, and uh, I wonder because Layla, you you work on metal, but you also uh, for solo you work on these uh, atmospheric. Uh, how, how would you describe them? It's Your ambient. Uh, I would say it's got some. It's not totally ambient because. Uh, the songs do have structure, and some of them have lyrics. Um, you know, digital or analog or a mixture. A mixture. Um, most of it's trumpet based, so I, I okay. manipulate trumpet in, in lots of different ways. Yeah. Um, so there's a neoclassical element. There's a dark jazz element. Um, uh, I use found sounds, so I go out and I record. Uh, you know get your uh, no doubt on your frogs and insects and that kind of thing and i manipulate them electronically as well and i loop them and um i do all sorts of weird things with my voice so i was telling dan that um you know i i i i give death metal vocal lessons so so i have that part down and then i also uh you know sing more of the ethereal style um like um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. 
something like you would hear on a David Lynch soundtrack. Right. <laughs> so is 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 a goal when when you're creating one of these songs is do you have a goal in mind of trying to make the each individual sound be undiscernible from the source? Like, yeah. Is, is it is it is it a bit of a thrill for you if people can't tell that that's a trumpet or people can't tell that that's like a human voice? Yeah, I I do I I do like to warp things so you don't really know what they are. Yeah. But my pet peeve is when people think it's a saxophone and not a trumpet. <laughs> like I'm a brass. <laughs> yeah, that just says something about my trumpet tone that I'm not always happy about. But, um, but if you think it's like a voice or a, or a drum or like um, you know anything else, then I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, and how do the two it, it, those two sides the the sort of the, the the metal and the atmospheric how much interplay is there like do you ever bring in some of Absolutely. your atmospheric ideas okay yeah so um so my band vastum uh we just came out with an album last fall that uses a lot more ambient stuff uh, infused into it than than previously it's our fourth album and so i'm integrating it more and more as time goes on and and uh i was going to say something about metal because when you talk about metal there's so many subgenres that you're you're not even really talking about the same thing uh right. you know you have you have um classic traditional heavy metal you have uh you know black metal death metal doom metal and those last three they really um they're a lot more eclectic in terms of the different sounds use. There's a lot, sometimes a lot of keyboard or, um, and, and just, you know, all these ambient sound clips. You know, if you go to a death metal concert, you're going to see probably at least 10 minutes of like, you know, uh, some pre-recorded right. intro clip or something. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we played Suspiria in the background of one of our record releases. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> so I get that. Um, Dan, here, here, here falls. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Do you have a specific genre that you're working in, or are you trying to diversify that and draw from those different uh, inspirations? I've been having fun jumping genre to genre, which I think makes my Hero Falls playlist sound terrible uh, to most people. Um, <laughs> I, no, I the whole concept of Hero Falls is that I wanted to tell stories about this fictional city where superheroes and supervillains exist, and every every song is another character's little vignette. Right. So there yep. was no kind of you, a lot of times you sit down and you listen to an, an artist and, uh, you know, they have a sound and you're used to that and you mm -hmm. like hearing that sound. And that's what you expect. Uh, but again, I like Layla. I grew up listening to a lot of Beatles. And, you know, if the White Album is nothing, if not a, sh a, a ton of whiplash, you know, Sgt. Pepper right. just shifts genres every track. So to me, that's normal. So I surprised myself the first track that I put out, the first two. Uh, one was ska. I never sat down and said, I'm going to write a ska song, but the story suggested that it should be ska. So yeah, I'm jumping around uh, based on different things. Sometimes it's, well, I think this mood of the music tells the story best, and other times, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest, I, there's, there's one that I'm working on now that I'm like, if I do it in this genre, I can collaborate with these kind of people. So I, I right. came up with like a story and then I realized I'm like, okay, well that character story could be told in this genre of music and that's what led it. So yeah, I, if you listen, there's on Spotify, you can listen to all the tracks. I've been releasing one a month. I have one ready to come out next week um, uh, featuring Steph Dowling from work on vocals. Yeah. I have a guest female vocalist. I can confirm that, that Steph is uh, is doing vocals and it's my sort of uh, fake Foo Fighters track is what I've been calling it. It's a very up, upbeat, uh, aggressive, angry, teen, Driving. angsty, yeah, kind of, uh, you know, four on the floor uh, kind of rock track. But, you know, I also have these like delicate minor key things and I have this really weepy ballad that, you know, is taking place at, at one of the characters' graves. I mean, so I've just been, I've been having fun jumping around from place to place. But I think if you listen to the uh, the the playlist, 
in the order that I've got it, which is literally just chronological release, uh, it probably sounds like garbage. And you're like, I don't <laughs> like. I just got into this groove, and now we're completely somewhere else. So, yeah, I'm. Th- I've just been letting the stories dictate what I do. I think you're being very hard on yourself. I think I think uh, there's a lot more sort of widespread genre appreciation out there. It well, just doesn't get as much. Th- th- those people aren't as loud. I hope so. I mean. I you know, it, it'd be nice if people are open to everything. But, you know, we all have what we like. You know, I gravitate towards power pop. I gravitate towards 80s hard rock. Uh, I can appreciate other things. But, you know, when it's like I need something to calm down or I need something to feel good or I need something for my commute or for my workout, you know, I know what I go for. Yeah. You know, I actually did yeah. try to work out to one of my own songs and it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, got it. We're about to wrap up. Got a couple more things. Uh, Dan got a question from uh, Roro 8 a uh, in the chat way earlier. Hopefully they're still there. Uh, do I need to learn how to play the guitar before playing this refer this being Rocksmith? Oh no. In fact, uh, you will find that Rocksmith assumes you have never touched a guitar before. Like Rocksmith is the first thing that you should open after you open your guitar case. Uh, a fun little thing that most people don't know, except for Squirrely Ninja in the chat room, uh, when they launched, when Ubisoft launched 2014, uh, they actually sent out loner guitars to people in the press, and it came with a picture. It came with, you know, you would open up the case, and there was uh, just a picture of Rocksmith and a picture of a guitar, and all it said was, now what? And that is, I mean, and I thought that was kind of brilliant because that's exactly what Rocksmith was built for. You have the desire to learn to play guitar, but you don't know where to start. That's why Rocksmith was built. There's a video in yeah. Rocksmith that most people have never even seen that shows you how to correctly put a strap on a guitar. You know, like we don't we don't assume yeah. that you know anything. So yeah, by all means, if you've never touched a guitar before, you don't know how to play, or maybe you know a little bit and you don't know if you're doing it right. Yeah, absolutely, you should feel at home. Just dig into the lessons in Rocksmith. Uh, Dirk Fiddler in the chat and uh, during one of his segments uh, again said uh, he learned everything from Rocksmith. Everything yeah, and about and, uh, sorry, guitar. Derp, you know, like uh, you're, you're you're showing us everything that we didn't we didn't <laughs> do well enough. Uh, that that's actually been something very interesting. We've seen how people who have learned primarily or entirely from Rocksmith, like where did we where did we leave things out that would have been oh we should have explained this yeah. or we see it's been very fascinating. It's very gratifying that people say like this yeah. was my primary way, but at the same time we're also taking notes on this is what we should be able to do better and we should have done this better and how can we address this. So thank you for letting us know what you know what what percentage of your i'd be curious to see just what the chat says like i learned 60 percent from rocksmith and 40 percent from private lessons or 60 20 20 youtube or something you know like or, i would yeah, love I, to know I that kind tried of stuff playing for 10 years in, uh, uh, Le- Leila, uh meme 1029 said okay from the first minute of that uh latest vasm album that's definitely something that's going